Hey y'all, this is Cindy. I'm the Tireless Tangler and you've arrived at another Tangle Tuesday. Today's pattern is going to be Scaraboo by Zentangle. It is an original pattern and I'm going to explore it with you right now. So Scaraboo is a ribbon pattern, a border pattern, and it starts off very similarly to the pattern Noom Repus. And it starts with these very open, shallow S shapes. You start the next one tucked into the bottom well of the one before. The next step is a little bit tricky. You, we are going to connect these also, as in Numeripus, and we are going to connect the, the corners let me show you right here in this fashion. You're going to put a little ball on the end of a curved C shape and you're going to curve that in crossing over the first line and meeting up with the second line and you will come up with a sort of a wave looking pattern. And taking your time, just continue this, putting a very relaxed C shape in there with a little ball on one end. Now the next step, we're going to do a little drawing behind in the hollow ball fashion. I'm referring to the Zentangle original pattern hollow ball. And it's going to start by taking off from the lower dip and coming behind the wave and then you add that C shape with a little ball on the end. So you're basically doing something similar to what you did on the other side. Now a uh, safety note, <laughs> not safety but um, just a cautionary note from Simba. He says, be careful that you put this in as a separate little stroke and don't continue on with the stroke, with the S stroke that we had in there, if that makes sense. And finally, we're going to Aura all the way around. Now, there are a couple of tips for the Aura process. You may do this as exacting or as loosely as you want. I think, uh, in general, for this pattern to really flow, uh, you're going to want to keep these, these, um, these Auras from being too exact, meaning that you're going to want to take these dips down, but not really go into that much detail. So just sort of uh, aura-ing around your little uh, ball-shaped tendril, it looks a little bit like fangle, and then dipping in to the wave, just barely, and coming back out and finishing the aura around the next one down. And you'll see that if you don't, if you aren't so exact with the aura here, if you just let it flow from one to the next with a little dip, uh, you're going to get something that flows out pretty naturally. Now here's another example. It's going to be a little shorter and I'm going to explore here a few variations, or maybe not variations, but embellishments, or as Brian Crimmins uh, calls them, Zen embellishments, and I love that phrase or word. I don't know if it'd be considered a phrase. That's two words. Somebody's going to tell me in comments, I know. So I'm basically just repeating what I just did. The difference is I'm 
uh, drawing this uh, starting on the right side instead of the left as I did the last time, and I apologize for any um, confusion that that may cause you guys. So this step is the one that really made me stop and go, okay, what am I doing here? Because you would think that it would make sense for this little curly tendril to come up from that S shape and go behind. But you're actually adding this tendril as a little curly cue coming out of that um, S as well. If you, <laughs> I'm not sure that's a good way to describe it, the little uh, dip in the S there. and Aura. Now on this one I'm specifically keeping my Auras a little looser and a little more vague and you'll see that makes a very pretty meta pattern if you can get it to work right. Sort of makes those fat spiral looking things. And here I'm trying to decide whether or not to put a little dip and in interest in this side with the little points coming off of the waves or if I want to just uh, keep them loose and even. We're going to see what how it comes out. With me it's always an adventure, isn't it? So I'm deciding here that I've gone too far into that one. So you really don't want to dip in too far with these, with your auras. You just want to leave them a little bit loose, but of course you can do them however you like. This is Zentangle, and there are no mistakes in this method. Look at all things that you would normally see as a mistake or an unintentional outcome, and try to look at it as an opportunity to explore or do something different or new. It's, it's a very interesting thought process that will take you to some really nice places in your head. I promise. So now what I'm doing is I'm just taking off the sharp corners here by adding a little line weight rounding. I'm just uh, taking these corners off with, by adding a little bit of extra ink there. And I really like what, what the rounding does for this. Now I want to play also with another aura on this. I think that gives you extra uh, possibilities. So I'm going to play a little bit with that here, trying to take my time and not getting in a rush. It is frequently a problem for me when I'm auraing. I can see the end line and I'm just in a big rush to get there. And so when I catch myself doing that, I try to take a breath in through the nose, out through the mouth, and relax. Now, I find it fun to, if you're going to add an aura, make it an interesting aura. Do something different. Um, inter intermittent dots are a fun thing to do. I also like decorating up in these little waves with a little darked in point with a couple of dots. I think that makes a pretty, uh, pretty look, a nice embellishment. What else could we do here? could put some decoration down in this area to draw attention to that point or not as you will. I don't hate that look. Um, you could put cute little orbs on this like if it were Jester, the Tangle Jester 
which I love, love, love. I think you guys know that. Um, what else? Uh, you could fangle the tops of these a little bit, although I guess technically either way you could fangle that. But you could um, make it less of a ball and more of a sort of a the end of a tendril. I'm not sure if that's a good explanation or description, but y'all can see what I mean, hopefully. So that's an interesting look. You could make some interesting, uh, you could create some interest on your aura by adding something simple like dots. You could also fan lines out from here. And I do like that it sort of enhances the beneath quality or the behind quality. Hmm. Another thing you could do if you're going to add an extra aura, as I did on this one, you could... Uh, make little squares or as I do dots and then square them off and sort of check that outer aura which might make it interesting it might detract a little bit I'm not sure I'd have to shade it and see to make sure that's definitely a possibility um, you could do the dots dashes thing add a little interest to that. I really do like some of these simple things. Um, what else? What else comes to mind for you guys? Give me a comment and let me know what you think you're going to do with this tangle. I have never used this before today but I felt like it would uh, really showcase itself well in a dingbat situation. So uh, I went ahead and chose it. I find it very interesting to draw. Although I will tell you that in this, in this uh, third step, so this would be the first step with the S's. And then the second step would be to make the wave coming out. Put the ends on here. So I'm going to make my wave here and then come out to my little curly point or my little ball or orb or whatever you want to call it or my little fangle. Simba says hi to little Sammy today, and Max, Brody, and Karma, and we won't forget Bunny either. Still haven't gotten any pictures of kitties, guys. You cat lovers are letting me down. So the part of this that requires some thinking is the next step where you go behind the wave. And so take a little bit of care as you figure out the next step. Remember, you're not continuing the curved line that goes up from the S, but you're drawing in a new one on this next side. Remember to reflect that line in the well to beginning in the beginning, take off from there. I'm doing it a little bit opposite of that because I have trouble getting the the um, stalks of this lined up on each side if I go the other direction. So I tend to have a nicer um, curve when I approach it in this way. But of course you may do whatever you wish, whatever is the easiest for you. 
Let's do one more. I didn't really have room there, so I'm going to add that on the other side and sort of um, just adapt. The last step is to aura this. I'm not doing quite as neat a job on this one as I did on the last one, but I want to take my time and do this again slowly for you because um, uh, the second the or, th or the th rather the third step is can be a little bit of a of a a thinker um, one that you will have to sort of put your brain into some till you get used to the pattern and then you'll be fine of course most of you'll be fine anyway but there are some that are like me that struggle with these kinds of things or you overthink them and that's frequently a problem for me as well so you can see by creating your auras in different ways either tighter or looser in um, with thicker or thinner whatever you want to call it um, adding line weight different things you can really give this a much different look depending on how you want to handle the embellishments. So this pretty thing is Scaraboo. I'm really glad I took the time to get to know this with you a little bit today. I'm going to have fun creating a tile and embellishing that. I think I'm getting a little crazy with the line weight right now. Now for shading, really what I'm going to do is shade around the outside. And I'm also going to shade on the inside in just one place. And that is where the wave overlaps. And I'm going to shade beneath that little S wave there. And uh, that's pretty much it. For what I'm going to do for shading around the outside will help pop it out a little bit and then if you shade right there along this line uh, that that is a very natural place to shade where there's an overlap or a seeming overlap and uh, adding a little depth right there is going to uh, make it look really cool all right guys that is it for Tangle Tuesday. I have decided to focus on one tangle and go a little bit more in depth so that I feel like I'm doing them justice instead of rushing through. So that is where we're going to stop today. I hope you've enjoyed this video and found it helpful. And if you have any thoughts or feedback, I would love to hear from you in comments. I am getting some really good ideas about where to go with our next project, which will be uh, holiday related. And we'll see what happens. It'll be fun. So come back tomorrow for our zine project uh, in conjunction with the book uh, Zentangled Dingbats by Brian Crimmins, CZT. And uh, we are posting some of our art in the Facebook group dynamic dingbats and I just thought this pattern would go really nicely on a dingbat or on a dingbats. Don't ask me to uh, get into the language thing today. I'm clearly not at my best. All right guys this has been great to see you today. Uh, I will see you tomorrow for another dynamic dingbats.